Oh, thank you very much, Glenn, and good morning. I hope you can hear me over there. Um, yes, your voice right. is coming so up. Thank you. Great. So in this presentation, I'm going to give an overview of non-market values in land, especially focusing on um, indigenous and traditional lands with case studies from um, sub-Saharan Africa, um, especially from Ghana. Now, this presentation is um, a part of the manual on the valuation of unregistered lands, which was published by UN Habitat G and GLTN in um, 2021, and it was co-authored by me, um, Dr. Mike McDermott from Australia, and Professor Peter White from University of Reading in the UK. So my presentation today is going to cover the um, concept of um, land tenure and unregistered lands. I'll talk about land, non-market values in land. And then finally, I'll delve into sociocultural and natural capital. But then I will sort of um, um, sit, this, sit these in uh, within two case studies talking about the problem and then an example of, um, of how this process is in practice. So getting started so to set the scene let us look at this case of the Bui Dam project from Ghana now the Bui Dam project was um the Bui Dam was constructed in 2008 by the government of Ghana with funding from um from the Exim Bank of China and um on these two maps you see the situation before and then after so it used to be a river the black Volta, that was supplying uh, um, water through a forest reserve you can see on the left hand side over here and there were three villages um, alongside this river and these were the villages that were resettled later and you can find them here in the resettlement township b so <clears throat> What was the situation on the ground? You had a mix of settlers and indigent. There was a complex system of customary land tenure interests where you had the, um, the paramount chief or the Omaihene at the top, and then you had um, divisional chiefs under him uh, or headmen, and then you had family heads and uh, members of the family. So at the top of it, the, um, the traditional leader or the um, the uh, Paramount chief uh, held the Alodial title in trust for the people, and then the um, divisional chiefs and then the family heads held the sub Alodial title, and then the local people had tenancies and then usufruct. The nature of the usufruct being that um, people hold the land ad infinitum. Now, after the resettlement was done, something that was seen was that the um, the government took away the structural interest and gave the people um, leaseholds. Now, these leaseholds are 99-year leases, which are um, uh, after which the lands revert to the government. And so it reduced people's land tenure, perception of their land tenure security, but they, even though their legal land tenure security increased because they felt like the government came to take our lands before and they, they can take it back again. Then um, you also had the replacement of um, sacred worship sites and um, limited compensation options. They also lumped up culturally um, different or diverse people in a one square kilometer uh, uh, radius of resettlement area in the resettlement township B. So all these problems um, uh, came up because one key aspect was not understood, the social values that people hold within their community. And so how can this be considered? Let us look at what we mean when we talk about unregistered lands and um, non-market value. So this is a snapshot of um, some three countries in Sub-Saharan Africa and the level of registration over there. And so we can see in Zambia, uh, just about 20% of the lands there are registered in Ghana, just under 10%. And then in Kenya, you have about um, 25%. Now, most of the lands you find in deep blue, the larger unregistered ones are mostly customary lands. But 
On the larger scale, unregistered lands would uh, include lands that may or may not be registered by the state, uh, recognized by the state, but they may not necessarily be illegal. Um, lands that have not been registered in any sense, and these usually have no, no written contract, no deed of transfer, they have no title certificate, and they are usually um, communal in ownership. And this is actually one of the reasons why its valuation becomes difficult as we see in the next slide. So um, borrowing from the UN Habitat's continuum of land rights, let us consider how this uh, unregistered lands link to market and non-market values. So on the, um, on the extreme left-hand side, we find the informal land rights and then the extreme rights, we find the formal land rights. And with the informal rights, um, these are usually um, um, recognized through social networks um, uh, built on traditional rights. And these social networks may be both, um, may be familial, both uterine and then conjugal ties. And um, you also have somewhere in the middle, you have the administrative recognition and these rights are recognized by the states, but um, usually cannot be enforced and cannot be registered. So a good example is the community land rights that you had in Kenya um, uh, up until the nature of the community lands, land rights you had in Kenya up until 2016 when the Community Lands Act was passed with that uh, recognized community lands and allow them to be registered. On the right hand side, you have formal land rights, which, and these are more, these are usually um, uh, registrable, they have market activities going on on them, and they, uh, they have more financialization. And this is due to the frequency of transfer on land rights, which give um, markets values and um, comparative values allowing these rights to be valued on the background of the evidence of the sales. Then now market value is limited to the concept of value in exchange. And so if there is no land market within an area, there is, or there is very little market within an area or little land mobility, it is very difficult to ascertain the market value. But then you also have other forms of value such as the fair value and then the investment value. The fair value reflecting uh, specific markets and any investment value reflecting the um, value in use. Now, um, economically speaking, um, Unregistered lands are capable of producing both market and non-market values. Use values may be direct or indirect or option values. Now, direct values can be extractive such as farming, um, fishing or mining, non-extractive such as uh, habitation and then recreation. Direct use values are eminently quantifiable monetarily. However, in, uh, indirect use values include uses like water purification or enjoyment of a view, and option value arises because of future uncertainty. In other words, the release of value should uh, certain events occur. Indirect use values and option values are usually harder to quantify, and these are the ones we find on the left-hand side over here. And However, even when estimating uh, market values themselves, the market itself is not exact. And we are not dealing with fiscal quantities, but in probabilities of um, mental reactions, some logical, some emotional, in purchases and then in sellers. But then with non-market values, these include the existence values, altruistic values, so um, intergenerational and equity concerns, bequest values that is intergenerational um, um, equity concerns, then non-market values are much harder to quantify monetarily. So indeed doing so has been, um, has been criticized as um, taking a form of commodification that is extending market norms to values that do not pertain to the monetary domain. So um, for 
property, social values include subsistence and uh, physiological development, self-identity, so um, people's social status and their personalization of property. You are also looking at um, social capital. This includes relationships between um, ownership and then um, uh, including relationships and ownership as a social sociocultural status. Then we're also looking at social equity and empowerment, political, that is uh, looking at political, gender, and social relations, and then psychological well-being, personal comfort, and then convenience. So land may form a part of a person's identity and um, communal land rights may foster connections between people and uh, between people and their physical environment. It relates to the needs and wants of uh, society and individuals. And an essential point in our context is that social values cannot be adequately con um, con captured by monetary um, uh, numbers. Ecological value is also intrinsic and is not usually reviewed in mon uh, it's not usually reviewed monetarily in market transactions, although markets in ecological systems and natural capital are emerging. So real property or natural capital in this context has considerable value in terms of ecological service provision. And this is enabled and influenced by biodiversity and biomass. These services are essential to the future of the planet. And these all include um, climate regulation, air, soil, and water quality improvement, uh, and uh, carbon dioxide sequestration. Now, these values may be um, consumed by current incumbents or retained as an option for future use by the um, future generation. Biodiversity has values that are difficult if not impossible to measure in market prices. So some would argue that um, biodiversity is priceless, its value is infinite. But economists might argue that biodiversity in another commodity subject to trade-offs and substitution, one unique species could be substituted for another in terms of its utility at the margin. And marginal value here measures the change in the total value, but marginal value of diversity is problematic because of the inter, uh, interrelationship between the value of a single asset such as a river and the value of the related ecosystems or other natural assets. So this priority of values, economic, socioeconomic, and ecological, means there is often a, di a di disparity between the market and accounting value. And uh, the accounting value here being the contribution of an uh, additional unit or property that would make the flow of um, that will make it to the flow of the socio and ecological benefits. So ideally, market value and uh, Sorry, accounting I value would, um, uh, maybe right? up some of these ideas as we go to the questions. Um, right. Okay. It's, uh, we we are a bit short of time, so we really look forward to hearing a, a deeper dive right. in during the question time. Sorry about that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much.